Hello, my name is Byron here from Man and Machine UK, and today we're going to be looking at the mesh refinement features offered within the Fusion 360 simulation environment. Uh, we know that generally the smaller your mesh, the more accurate your, your results are going to be, uh, but this comes at a bigger time cost in order to solve the simulation. Um, so how do you even know that your output results that you're getting are accurate and are not being affected by the mesh you have created. Uh, generally in the past, we would run a mesh convergence study uh, where you would just map the maximum stre uh, stress against the mesh uh, element quantity. And you would do this until you reach convergence, uh, typically, typically within 3% uh, of each study. Uh, then that should give you a, a good indication that your your mesh is sufficiently refined. Uh, thankfully, Autodesk have simplified this process and you can do it all within the simulation environment. And we're just gonna be running through that today. So I'll jump into the simulation workspace. Uh, we'll just do a linear static study. And then Fusion makes it nice and simple for you to run these studies. So you just work from the left to right and that will allow you to put in all the information Fusion needs to solve the study. So we'll start with our material and that's being pulled in straight from the model. And we can see it has a yield strength of 165 megapascals there. And we'll add our constraints. So I'll just add one face there. So we'll constrain that face in the X, Y, and Z direction. Uh, then we'll come to our load and just on the other side we'll do an axial force pulling in the opposite direction of about uh, eight kilonewtons and that's pretty much all we need to run this study so we'll leave our mesh settings as standard for now run a quick pre-check fusion has all the information required and then we can just solve it So it's a nice and simple part, so it shouldn't take it all too long to solve. And then we can see that it's giving us a maximum strength, uh, strength uh, stress of 135 megapascals. Uh, we can see this is a pretty coarse mesh though. So we may not trust these results fully. Uh, we can see it does actually it's marginal, but it's not necessarily going to fail. So you may want to just run with this and say, okay, uh, this is good enough for this operation. So let's just keep this part as is and not change it. Uh, but if you wanted to make sure that your results are uh, optimized and that you can trust them fully, you may want to run a mesh refinement study so this is exactly the same as the mesh convergence I showed you, uh, but this is just built into the fusion simulation. So it comes with a few preset options. So you can have low mesh refinement where it will stop at two and it will stop once there's a 20% convergence. And then you can do a medium or high and these results just go lower or you can set your own custom values. And for this one, I would want, let's say, 1% uh, convergence. So very similar results between the studies. And then uh, we can trust those studies a lot more, knowing that changes to the mesh aren't having drastic results uh, to the results. Uh, so we'll just add that and then rerun the study. So it will take a bit longer because it's going to run a few more mesh refinements. Uh, but it's still fairly quick. So it's running through these. And now we can see at the maximum strength of this has jumped to 175 megapascals. 
So that's about a 40 MPa increase uh, just by changing this mesh. And if we go up here to results, uh, we can actually look at this convergence plot. And we can see that it started at 135, it's gone up to 160, and then at the top here, it's jumped to 175 for um, the third study, and then it's barely increased for the fourth study. So the difference between the study in three and four is less than 0.05%. So we know that these results are pretty accurate. And as this is a fairly straightforward part, uh, we can do some hand calculations and we've worked this out to be uh, about 172 MPa peak stress. Uh, so now you can know that these are accurate results and clearly this model uh, either needs to be redesigned or we need to change the material so that our, our safety factor um, is up here with a margin of three as opposed to failing currently. Uh, there's also another way of refining your mesh and you can use local mesh controls. Uh, so we know that our peak stresses are going to be on this whole face. Um, so we can click this face and then just refine the mesh along this face. So that's maybe a bit small, but let's do say 0.5 mil. Press OK. Um, I'm going to take off the refinement just to speed this up. And then we can rerun this, these results. And again, because it's nice and straightforward, it shouldn't take too long at all. And we can see we get a very similar result to the adaptive mesh refinement where it's yeah, within 0.1 uh, MPA. So we know that these are, are pretty close to uh, what we've worked out by hand. Uh, so we can trust these and move on with our simulator or with our design. Uh, so those are just a few ways to ensure that you're getting accurate results from your simulations. Uh, if you do have any questions regarding this or uh, questions regarding simulations in general, please reach out to us and uh, we'll be happy to try and answer any questions you have. Uh, thanks for watching this video and have a good day.